In the previous video, we set up a simple pipeline where we stream all the events in our casinos into our analytics data warehouse as they happen. Our analysts are happy since they can now do all kinds of analyses on what is happening in our casinos, even intraday. However, remember that there's also the probability of foul play. What if there is actually a high probability of foul play in an event? Well, if we just wait for a report compiled from the data in our analytics data warehouse, the cheater will be long gone. Instead, we want to have real-time alerts whenever there is a game event where the foul play probability is above a certain threshold. This functionality is way too special to use some Dataflow template that encodes this logic. Remember from the first example videos that we can use serverless Google Cloud functions to run Go code in the cloud. However, you might remember that those functions should finish rather quickly. Obviously, we can start a consumer in a function and then process the messages inside the function instance. After a few minutes, the function will automatically terminate. Well, in this case, we have two options. We could code a consumer and package it in a Docker container and run that container in something like Cloud Run. Since we're using PubSub, there's also a second possibility. Remember that in the first videos, we were using Cloud Functions with HTTP triggers. We sent an HTTP request to our function and then it ran. However, we can also opt to choose PubSub messages as a trigger. Every time a PubSub message gets created, it triggers a function and it is included in the request. This sounds great for a problem. We can just code a function that takes a PubSub as input, unmarshals the protobuffer to a game event, then looks at the foul play probability and raises an alert if the probability is above a certain threshold. First, let us create a new repository inside Google Cloud source repositories. I'm going to call this repository Vigus alert function. So for this, we go into cloud repositories then we want to create a new repository. So we say add repositories. We're going to create a new one, continue. And the repository name will be Vegas alert function. And the project is just go for data engineers. So as before, let us clone the repository on our machine and then start coding. So I want to clone that one using the Google Cloud SDK. So I'm just copying this call over here gcloud source repos clone vegas alert functions dash dash project go for data engineers so let's copy that let's go back into our terminal and then let's just execute that command that we just copied before then we go into vegas alert function and the first thing i will do is create a go project that project will contain two things a handler that will be applied to every pub sub message coming in Second, it will need to contain the structs that were compiled by the proto-c utility earlier. This is necessary since the pub sub messages are merely proto messages as bytes. I will call this project Vegas alert function. So first thing, first let's create a go project, go mod init. I'm going to use my GitHub handler. So and Vegas alert function. Okay, let's create an internal folder and copy the compiled proto messages over from the Vegas project. So let's create the internal folder first. And let's copy over the proto messages. So cp r. So we want to do a recursive copy. Then we go into the Vegas pro project proto built. Remember, there's this built folder go proto buff and I want to copy that folder into the internal folder. So let's have a look into the internal folder. So we have internal proto buff Vegas PB and there's this file games.pb.go. Now that we have that, let me create a handler file that contains a function that will be applied to every incoming pub sub message. I will call this file just handler.go. So I'm opening my editor. Let's call this handle let go. So as always, we start with the package. Uh, let's just call this one handler. I'm making some imports. So the first thing I'm going to import is context. I'm going to need, I want to do some logging because I want to raise an alert. Then I'm going to import the protobuf package, protobuf proto and we are going to need the internal uh, 
All right, and we're going to need the internal protobuffer structs. Okay, nothing special here. We just import the protogo package since we need the unmarshal functionality. Also, we import the compiled proto messages that reside inside the internal folder. Next, we need to define a struct that represents a pub sub message. It has one field called data, which is a slice of bytes. So let's create a new struct here. So let's define pub sub message struct. And I'm going to go with pub sub message which is a struct, which has one field, which is called data, and it's a slice of bytes. And that's it. So this is a pretty straightforward definition of a struct. Next on, we want to code the centerpiece of this, the function that we want to put every pub sub message through. The function should take a context and a pub sub message as input. It might return an error. Note that the pub sub message is the struct we have just defined. Inside the function, we can do whatever we want with that struct. I will call this function alert fall play. So let's define the handler function. And I'm going to call this one alert fall play. So it takes a context as input, it takes a pub sub message as input, and it might return an error. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is. Let's init an empty proto message. So game event is equal to Vegas PB. So that's the stuff that was compiled. And let's create a game event. And then let's unmarshal the data. So the error proto dot unmarshal. Well, where's the data? Well, it's inside this message data. And where do we want to marshal that in or unmarshal that into? well into this game event variable. Now if there's an error, so if the error is not nil, what we want to do is let's just return the error and let's get some space. Now comes our logic. So we, we check if the foul play probability is above our threshold. So let's extract the probability first which is equal to game event. Then we go into the fall detection field and then we take the probability probability field. Now, if the probability is a buffer threshold, which I'm just going to define as 20%, so this should raise some alarms and we send some muscle to the table. So we're gonna lock the following message, alert in all caps, Full play at table. Well, it's going to be a string, the line break, and the string is going to be game event dot id table device. And then we return by just returning nothing for the error. And that's it. Let's save this. So, as promised, the function takes a context and a pub sub message struct as input, and it returns an error. The first thing inside the function is the initialization of an empty game event struct that was compiled from a proto files using proto C. This is a struct where we want to unmarshal the proto bytes into. Remember that the pub sub message merely contains the bytes that we want to use in order to fill our game event variable. Hence, we use the unmarshal function from the proto package. As input, we give it the bytes that encodes the actual data. For this, we access the data fields from our pub sub message. For the target, we provide a pointer to the struct which is currently empty. We make sure that this unmarshalling does not produce any errors. If it produces an error, we simply return it. Then we extract the probability of foul play from our game event variable. If the probability is above 20%, we want to send off some tough guys to the respective table. Since we're not really managing a casino, I'm merely logging a message that raises an alert and mentions the table. Then we return nil for the error. And this is all we actually need to process a pub sub message. So let us commit those changes and upload them into the remote git repository. So let me save that. Actually, let's just check that I did everything correct. Duh, there's an error. Ah, yes, of course. So first of all, let me actually get the proto package. Forgot that one. And it seems that I misspelled something in the uh, in the import. So, ah, of course, it's not Vegas alert. It's Vegas alert function. So let me go back into the code. So let's go back into the handler code. And it's Vegas alert function. That's it. 
So let me try this one more time. So let's check that this works. No, still something wrong. IT, uh, ID table device, okay. Seems that this variable is not correct. So that's also why I didn't get an autocomplete. No problem. And let's just check again. So it's, uh, of course, it's ID table device. I was still referring to those BigQuery variable names. Okay, let's exit here. Let's try this one more time. So let's try to build the handler. That works. That's perfectly fine. So we are going to add these changes first. So git dash add a. Then we're going to commit this. And I'm going to say initial commit. And let me push those changes. Git push origin. If we now go back into our cloud source repository, we should see our code in there. So let me refresh this. And there's our code. Now oh, you see alert.go. Cool. Now that we have the code in place, we can create a new function in Google Cloud Function. So let's navigate to Google Cloud Function. So let's go to Cloud Function. And we will do a first generation function. So let's create a function. First generation environment. I'm going to call that function Vegas Alert. Actually, let's call this Vegas Alert function. And I will put this one into Iowa. It's already in Iowa. And I'm going to choose a different trigger. This time I'm choosing Cloud Pops Up. And also we will have to choose a topic. And for this we will take our Vegas topic. So this one right there, the Vegas topic. Then let's save this. All right, click Next. And again, for runtime, we'll choose Go 1.21. And for the source code, we will choose Cloud Source Repository. And for the entry point, we will have to choose a function inside of our source code. Obviously, we want to choose our alert foul play function for that one. So let's use alert foul play. So make sure you choose the right repository, which is our Vegas alert function repository. So Vegas alert function. All right, so finally we can deploy a function, wait a bit and start sending messages to it. So let's deploy this. Okay, the function is now in place. Let me open the producer that we have coded in Python and send some events to PubSub. So let's go back into the terminal. So let's go back into our Vegas project. Then we go into the Python folder. And remember there's the set env.sh file, which sets some environment variables. So I'm gonna source that one. And then I'm starting the producer, which sets in main.py. So I will keep this open in the back. Remember that the chance of having foul play is pretty low, so it will probably take some time to see a relevant alert. So let me just you know put this in the back. And to monitor this, we are going to open the logs of our function and wait for an alert to pop up. For this, we can navigate into our function, click on logs, and then open this in the log explorer. So let's actually click on logs. Then there should be the log explorer somewhere over here, which is right here. There we have the option to stream the logs. So let's actually click that one. Now we just have to wait for some alerts inside the logging. So you can see there's a quite a bunch of functions being run. And there you go. Luckily, we caught the cheater red-handed and we were able to send some grim-looking associates of our casino that persuaded the cheater not to try that again. So this concludes the section on real-time processing of streaming data. I hope you found that section useful.